back is two or more wool, generally with an elf, okay? But a pack, what really makes a pack, it is, it is a true family unit. It has mom and dad, and they rule the roost, and don't let anybody fool you, mom really rules the roost. <laughs> she picks who she mates with, okay? Usually it's the alpha male, but sometimes she, you know, doesn't, doesn't win out. So we've got mom and dad, we've got the teenagers, the yearlings, okay, those are last year's pups, and then we've got sometimes other assorted family members, cousins, you know, things like that, and then you've got the, the baby pups, all right, so this family group is all together, the most of the wolves that we're seeing coming through your county right now are the teenagers. They've come up, they've gone through puberty, they're ready to find their own territory, they're ready to find the mate, so they start going off. It's just like, you know, our kids, they get out of high school, they're teenagers, they want to go into the world, they're looking for their own job, they're looking for their own family, looking for their own place to live. That's what we call dispersers, okay? And that's generally what we're getting coming through the county here, these animals that are dispersing through. She was a disperser. She initially came, and Kathleen has a map here. She initially came from Price County in Wisconsin, way over northwestern and central part of the state. She's about two years old. She had dispersed looking for a mate. She had obviously somewhere along the line found what we think was a mate because we think she was with another wolf. And she dispersed and came all the way over to Door County. They can go hundreds and thousands of miles when they disperse. Um, there was a wolf, a central state wolf, a wolf from the central part of the state that made it on the Ohio border in Indiana. There's also been an upper Michigan wolf that made it all the way to Missouri. Unfortunately, these dispersers don't have much of a very long life period because they tend to get back and kind of hit by cars and like that. Um, sometimes they get killed by other wolves. But that's, that's where it goes. Sometimes they come back home, just like teenagers do. <laughs> But it is a true family. So it's just kind of like what we got here. They got all these. This time of the year, um, the pups are born at generally around April. This time of the year, they're in what we call rendezvous sites. And you, you may have seen in the news lately that there were five, five dogs. Dogs killed or attacked up north. This time of year is for the bear hunters. This is the time they run their dogs and train their dogs. And what happens is they run through what we call these rendezvous sites. These are the family home sites. Go out and hunt. The adults are going out and hunt. And the teenagers are staying home and babysitting the pups. And they babysit the pups in what they call these rendezvous sites. Wolves are very, very, very protective of their family unit and their territory. Another dog, coyote, anything like that that comes into these family units, and they're very protective and they will attack. So it's, it's unfortunately for this time of the year, it's, it's called time for people to hunt with dogs and, and you know, they, the DNR does the best that they can to try and them away from those sites, but this is often to find out where the family units are staying in the summer, because they find out the dogs run through a find it, and that's how they find those pups. So, howling. We listen to whether or not, and sometimes just listening, we don't hear anything, so we have to kind of encourage them to talk. So in the late summer, generally starting about now, July and August, a bunch of us will go out and howl in different areas, mainly in northern Wisconsin.
what we're doing is we're howling, trying to find the pack and trying to find out if they had pups this year. There's no way we can tell the number that's in the pack because once they start going, they just go. <laughs> and if you've heard the coyotes, it's a lot like that. Once the coyotes start howling, they just have a good old time and they just go and go and go and go and go. And it's really kind of neat to listen to. But that's how they do it. Why do you think the wolves howl? Kids, why do you think they howl? Anybody else have an idea? Contact other wolves. Contact other wolves. They're communicating. That's how they talk. Each wolf has their own howl. Kind of like our fingerprint. Each wolf has their own howl. They don't generally howl at the moon. They generally howl when the moon is full because that's when wildlife is more active. So they're talking back and forth and saying, hey, let's let's go over here, let's do this, or I, I've got a deer kill over here, come on and munch down and eat, you know? So that's what they do. So, we're going to take a look, if you see an animal, we're going to take a look at it, we're going to remember some of the subtle differences. If you get a chance, an opportunity, go see if there's a track there. And yeah, you know, when you find poop along the road, sometimes it's kind of fun to take a look at it. See what's in there. The furry is a little, you know, you never know. It might be buried in there, that's usually a bear or, or a raccoon or something like that. Um, and then, if you hear howling, you know, where are we? Howling, the, the coyotes are going to bark. They're going to bark and they're going to yelp more than a wolf. The wolf is going to be a low, gone-out howl. The coyotes are going to bark. The pups in the wolves, they kind of bark too, but that's how we tell the difference. Um, there are some dogs that will howl, but usually not all the time. They kind of howl and then they bark and fun stuff like that. So, I'm going to tell you just a little bit. There are wild cards up here. Kathleen has um, the coyotes foxes. I also have the wolf wild cards here. So please kids, if you want a wild card, you can come get it. There is a skull up here. Be very careful with it. I you know, I would say suggest not picking it up, but I do also have a couple other skulls that you can look at. One's a female and one's a male just to tell the size difference. Get hit by that. But one of the things you want to look at is their canines. And I mean, they're very strong. Like I said, when they eat, they eat everything, the bones and everything. Their canine here, their main pulling, that, that tooth goes all the way back to here in the skull. <laughs> so I mean, very, very strong. Um, they can take a femur 